Here's this Mrs. Thompson again. We're going to do example three in section 8.8. We are learning how to complete the square. And example three, boy, if you did not like example two, you are not going to like example three. Um, this, this one's a little more challenging, only because they're starting to throw some coefficients at us and that are in front of the x squared. Example two really was a great way to kind of introduce that concept. They did make it a little bit easy on us by putting, making A a one, an understood one. As you're scanning all four of these practice problems, you're noticing, ooh, hey, we got a coefficient in front of our x squared. So we're actually going to have to do step one. And I tried to create some more room on your paper, but if uh, this is not working for you, there's not enough space, please go grab a piece of notebook paper and don't try and cram it. Spread it out so you can see your work. Um, sometimes when I make these worksheets, you know, I, I just don't take into consideration some of you write big, some of you write small, etc. and so forth. All right, so just stop the video a second and you can come back and turn me back on. Make sure you have notebook paper, especially if you need the lines to keep you kind of organized with your work. All right, let's start with letter A. First step, we're going to complete the square. We got to make sure the coefficient in front of x squared is 1. Well, it's not. It's a negative 2. So what you're going to do, because it's not, we're going to divide every term by negative 2. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm just dividing everything by negative 2. There are four terms up there. I'm just going to divide everything by negative 2. Now, the whole point is I want to cancel out the negative 2, so it's just x squared up front. And then 12 divided by negative 2 is negative 6. Negative 20 divided by negative 2 is positive 10. And of course, 0 divided by any number is still 0. Okay? So now we don't have a coefficient other than 1 in front of our x squared. So we were intentional. We've got to move C to the other side. Now to do that, we have to subtract it. Okay? So now we've got x squared minus 6x. I'm going to leave a little bit of space here because we're going to get into our next step, which is we're going to find the number that we're going to add to each side of the equation. We practiced this in example 1 and again in example 2. What you do is you take b, which is negative 6 in this problem. You're going to divide it by 2, and then you're going to square whatever that quotient is. So negative 6 divided by positive 2 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is positive 9, and that's what you're going to add to each side. Okay? Now, what you did was you on purpose made a perfect square trinomial on the left. We need to factor it. Okay? Here's your shortcut. x squared. What times itself is x squared? Right, x. 9. What times itself is 9? 3. And then to determine the middle sign, you look at your middle term. 6 is negative, so we're going to have a negative sign or a minus sign in between the x and the 3. Okay, so let's come over here to the right side, and we've got negative 10 plus 9, which is negative 1. Okay? So now... What we're going to do is we're going to move into step five. We're going to take the square root of each side because we want to undo that square. We're trying to free the x, get it out from underneath that. And we can do that by taking the square root. So now we have x minus 3 is equal to the square root of negative 1. Now in algebra 1, you can't take the square root of a negative number. There is no number times itself that will give you negative 1. Okay? Process that with me again. There is no number when you multiply it to itself will give you negative 1. 1 times 1 is positive 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Nothing will give you a negative number. Nothing times itself will give you a negative number. So what we have here is a big problem. You cannot take the square root of a negative 1 or any negative number in Algebra 1. 
When you get to Algebra 2, your awesome teacher is going to show you how to handle that situation. This is what we would term in Algebra 1 an imaginary number because it, there's just no real number answer to it. Algebra 1 just works with real numbers. We don't do or work with imaginary numbers until Algebra 2. Now let me interpret this situation for you. Because you cannot take the square root of that negative number, what that means is this parabola does not cross the x-axis. There are no zeros. That's how you tell. That just means it doesn't cross the x-axis. This particular parabola looks like it opens down, okay? And it doesn't crisscross the x-axis at all. Okay, so that's how you interpret that. So first of all, I can't take the square root of negative one, therefore that means there are no zeros. And that's what I wanna see as your answer, okay? Now let's look at letter B. Let's do step one. Make sure the coefficient in front of x squared is one. Okay, so it's not, so I have to divide all three terms by three. Okay, look, I put three. So now I got x squared minus 10 thirds x equals negative one. All right, so the C in step two is on the other side of the equal sign away from the x squared plus bx, got it. Okay, we gotta find the number to add to each side. Okay, so this is hard because B is a fraction. We have to take 10, negative 10 thirds and divide it by two before we square it. Okay, so we're gonna do copy, change, flip, okay? And we have negative 10 over six, which can be reduced to negative five thirds. That's the fraction you're gonna square, okay? That's the fraction you're gonna square. And that's the number we're gonna to add to each side. So it looks really super complicated. Or, no, we're not adding negative 5 thirds squared, we're gonna add 25 ninths. Sorry, I didn't square it for you. We're gonna add 25 ninths to each side. And some of you are probably like, why can't we just turn it into a decimal? I'll show you in just a second. Please be patient with me. Don't lose heart, please. Okay. So let's take a look. Now, we created a perfect square trinomial. You're probably wondering how in the world is she gonna factor this? I'm gonna show you a shortcut. Please do not lose heart or faith in me, okay? So we already know how to break up x squared. We know the middle term is negative, so that means our middle term is gonna be negative, or our middle sign is negative. And you're like, what in the world am I gonna put there for 25 ninths? Okay, what I do is I basically just in my mind take the square root of 25 ninths. Whatever the number is, right before I squared it is the number that goes here. So it was negative, there's my negative sign, 5 thirds. Because I know that 5 thirds times 5 thirds is 25 ninths. So you're basically taking the square root of 25 and the square root of 9. And that's the number that goes in there. Okay. Now you're going to have to do a little bit of addition here, actually technically subtraction. we are going to take negative 1 and add 25 ninths to it. Now you can rename negative 1 as negative 9 over 9 so that they, these two numbers have the same denominator. So um, I wouldn't leave it as a whole number necessarily. I would just change it to negative 9 over positive 9. That way they have the same exact denominator, see? And then just do negative 9 plus 25, which is 16 over 9. Now, I don't change it to a decimal because this is the key right here. Watch what I'm going to do. Just watch for a second. To undo a square, i got to take the square root. And if I had 16 ninths as a decimal, I wouldn't be able to do it in my head what the square root of that decimal was. But you know what? I do know how to take the square root of 16, which is 4, and the square root of 9, which is 3. I can do that in my head. 
okay? Whereas I, I would really be highly dependent on my calculator. And that's if I didn't round it. And, and if, if it was a repeater decimal, I'd be really kind of up the creek without a paddle. So I'm, I'm sticking with the exact answer, and that's why I'm choosing not to turn things into decimals, because I want the exact answer. Now, if it tells you approximate the answer, then turn it into a decimal. That's fine. But we want the exact answer. So now we have two equations. We've got x minus 5 thirds is equal to 4 thirds. We also have x minus 5 thirds is equal to negative 4 thirds. Now they have the same denominator, so that's really good. So all I have to do is just add them together. And we have x equals 4 plus 5 is 9. 9 thirds, 9 thirds is 3. So it actually worked out to be exactly the integer 3. That's one of our answers. That's one of our zeros. And then we're going to add 5 thirds over here. And negative 4 plus 5 is 1. That's 1 third. So our two, uh, we do have that this parabola is going to crisscross the x-axis. Our zeros are going to cross at positive 3 and at positive one-third on the x-axis. So it looks very complicated, I know, but we're following the same steps over and over and over and over again, okay? I'm trying to make it easier for you. Trying. I hope you feel the love. If you don't, don't tell me. Okay, I'm gonna erase just a little bit. I just need a little bit of space. You don't erase. Just keep working on your notebook paper. I'm gonna do one more with you and I'm gonna leave you to do one, okay? Letter C looks really hard. <laughs> so I'll do C. You can thank me later. All right, let's look at this one. Make sure the coefficient in front of x squared is 1. So I'm going to divide everything by 3 because it's not 1 just yet. Now it is because I've divided everything by 3. Okay. Awesome. We've got some fractions in there. Don't, don't get squeamish on me. You're going to be just fine. Hang with me. Don't give up. Okay, now we need to move C to the other side. So we need to add two-thirds to each side. Okay, looks good. Don't give up. Okay. I'm going to leave a little bit of space because we need to add the same number to each side. Okay, now that number is going to be kind of hard to figure out, but we can do it together. We're going to take negative five-thirds and we're going to divide it by two. And then we'll square it, okay? So negative 5 thirds, rewrite it, copy, change, flip, okay? And that's going to give us negative 5 sixths, and we need to square that. And that's going to be 25 36, because you square both the top and the bottom. So we're going to add 25 36 to each side, okay? I know some of you are like, oh my goodness, this is getting crazy. All right, now we made a perfect square trinomial on the left, so we know we're going to be able to factor this pretty easily. So we got an x, our middle term is negative, so we'll put a minus sign there. And then just take the square root of that fraction. Square root of 25 is 5, square root of 36 is 6. So that's, that's how you factor it, okay? It's really that simple. Let's see here. we got to add 2 thirds and 25, 36. You can go ahead and change 2 thirds so that it's um, got a common denominator if you want to. Um, that might actually be easier. Just throw it in your calculator. Whatever works for you works for me. I don't really care. And then you're going to get 24. So another name for this fraction is 24, 36. Okay. So that's what we're going to use instead. We, in order to add fractions or subtract fractions, you need a common denominator. That's why I did that, in case you forgot. So we need to add 24 and 25 together, and that's going to give us 49 over 36. Now I'm going to leave it that way. Guess what? Both of those numbers, both 49 and 36, are perfect squares. They, we can take the square root of those numbers. So now we're going to take the square root of each side. We've simplified. And I'm going to kind of move out here a little bit. I have x minus 5, 6 
is equal to positive or negative, and you need to take the square root of both the 49 and the 36. And I'll get square root of 49 is 7, square root of 36 is 6, and there you go. And then last step, we're going to create our two equations. So I got x minus 5, 6 is equal to positive 7, 6, and x minus 5, 6 is equal to negative 7, 6. And then we're going to add 5, 6 to each side. And we'll have x equals 12 over 6, which is exactly 2. All right, so one of our um, zeros is exactly 2. The other one, let's add 5, 6 here. And we're going to get, looks like negative 2, 6, which reduces to negative 1 third. So there's your two zeros right there. One's a whole number, so if we graph this on our graphing calculator, we would clearly see it, it would crisscross at two. The other one we wouldn't be able to see as well because it's at negative one third. It doesn't crisscross at a grid intersection. But that's how you get the exact answer. That's exactly where it crisscrosses, okay? Now, I have totally encompassed these notes, so hopefully you are on um, your own notebook paper. And yes, I know you might be intimidated. Just try. It, it never hurts to try. Even if you make a mistake, we can learn from that mistake. It's not a big deal. It never hurts you to try. Not in my class, okay? Now, to make it extra juicy for you, I think I'm going to give. That was, this one looks pretty difficult. Um, probably not as hard as the one I just did in letter C, but we're on probably on par for about the same kind of difficulty level. So how about juice up the, sweeten up the pot for you. I'll make letter D a five-point question if you can show me not just the answer, but all the work that entails these steps to completing the square. If you can do that and show me the answer at the end, I will give you not one, not two, not three, not four, but five bonus points. Good luck. Bring your questions to class.